And the top story is the city of Geneva, the parliament of the city of Geneva voted to grant him asylum. And this is something of a surprise development. I will read to you from a uh, press uh, report from Swissinfo.ch. It says the Geneva city parliament, this was on Wednesday, has adopted a motion demanding that the Swiss government offer asylum to controversial WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, that's the word they used. The somewhat surprising resolution was the result of an hour long debate on Wednesday evening framed in the context of providing better protection for whistleblowers. The text was proposed by Eric Bertinat of the conservative Right People's Party. The proposition picked up enough support from left-wing politicians to withstand opposition from the center-right radical liberals. The People's Party have also tried to push through legislation on the Geneva cantonal level to better protect whistleblowers, while at the federal level in Bern, one of its parliamentarians has raised Assange's case before the federal council. I was a state senator, more what you would say in um, in uh, in the US, not a, not in the provincial state. parliament. I see. Yeah. So in a sense, I'm analogous to the the guy who's put this motion up, who is uh, in a canton in um, Switzerland. Switzerland's cantons the equivalent of states. Basically. Right. So I was in a small party that was on the cross bench. So I observed the big guys doing stuff and tried to do negotiations to get things which I saw as being progressive, but stopped by the fact that the big parties monetarized and acting in the interests of vested interests, basically. So I got interested in power, and then I got interested in, of course, what the Swiss have done and are doing. And that's, I guess, how I ended up looking a bit at Switzerland, what it did. And this is um, feeding into this because this has uh, come out of one of their small parliaments, more or less. And the question is, can it go beyond that? Particularly helped with the possibility of uh, citizens initiated referenda to force their federal government to make it foreign policy, which if, if that were the case, it could escalate from being uh, started off in a state uh, canton parliament, then taken up by the public in significant numbers. And they can, citizens initiated referenda, as we call them uh, in, I don't know that's what they call in Australia anyway, um, that would then it becomes binding if, if it passes at a national referendum, it becomes binding on the federal government. So it's, it's the idea that an individual, or, or well, obviously a group of individuals who get signatures together, can actually escalate their power right up to telling the federal government what to do. And that doesn't exist that I know of in any other jurisdiction in the world. If, if I'm wrong, well, enlighten me, you know. So it's Switzerland's system is direct democracy, a form of it anyway. And that's what well, it's the most and, direct there is. That's and that's what I think has given great hope. Um, yeah. If it could become Swiss uh, foreign policy, I'm not sure. I'm still not sure how Assange would get himself from right. the Ecuadorian embassy through 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 England on the airport to Switzerland. But certainly, if you had a country saying we'll take him, there's at least a possibility there. That would be very significant. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Uh, whether whether it had a practical implication, uh, application or not, to have a government, a Swiss government, a European government saying that they were taken and that he should be free would be something the British government would, and the Americans would not look very kindly on. Uh, and you'd have to think even if that initiative won and that was binding on the federal government of Switzerland, whether how much effort they'd put into it. Uh, as we, I read in that piece, the federal parliament did not uh, look kindly on Assange uh, in one of its statements. Well, it's about one of the, it's about the um, the power of individuals versus the power of governments, isn't it? Well, you know, Mike, the reason why this subject came up is because the I don't know if you heard this part at the very beginning. Uh, the parliament of the city of Geneva, what we would call a city council in the U.S., but the Geneva parliament voted to uh, invite the government of Switzerland to bring Assange to Switzerland to give him asylum. Give him asylum. So it's also great... brought up the possibility of this becoming an initiative maybe to put pressure, to, well, to, put binding, to make it binding on the federal government of Switzerland to actually well, you try could, to do that. Some, well, first off, you've got to get some leadership in Switzerland to do this. And, uh, and if anybody's got contacts who can hear my voice, uh, please step forward in Switzerland, organize yourself, 
and uh, and you could initiate this uh, very directly, and in, and I'm sure it would pass in Switzerland because they have a great sense of uh, of fair play, uh, and and I'll tell you, it wouldn't be too shabby for uh, Assange to live in Switzerland. That's pretty good. That's, <laughs> that's where a, a lot of wealthy people go to spend their substance. <laughs> Well, they, they can step forward now because they have your they have your email address. So hopefully, anyone listening in Switzerland. Well, they don't have to contact me. They can just go do it. If if but it's got to be somebody in Switzerland. It's got to be somebody in Switzerland. And the city council is already of Geneva, which is a very substantial. Uh, if they've already passed this resolution, I think that they they the the city council itself could initiate uh, a a uh, an initiative. In this regard, and get a and get a, a vote in short order. Well, that's interesting. So. That could be the next step. I've just uh, I'm bil trilingual, in fact, but French and German are my other languages, and I've been really pouring through the Swiss news. And there was one thing that was uh, a little bit disconcerting. I love the spirit of it, but unfortunately, the whole debate in the municipal council generated by uh, Eric Bertina, is around the idea of Julian Assange being a whistleblower, not a journalist, not a publisher, not the editor-in-chief of, former editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks. So I would ask the supporters out there, especially the, those who speak French, please, I have already written to Radio Lac, which is one of the Geneva uh, radio stations because they were discussing that for about 12 minutes yesterday and it was a very radical idea to defend whistleblowers but the problem about whistleblowers is that they are indictable journalists are not we've uh, had it pointed out to us a couple of times particularly by William Binney executive order 13526 section 1.7 and that is Obama's law makes it illegal to classify material simply to hide a crime or embarrassment to an administration. So it's illegal to classify information that, that reveals a crime, but it is not illegal to publish it if it is leaked. So what I told uh, Radio Lac in, uh, in Switzerland is Julian Assange is a journalist, just like you. And I think if uh, the Swiss actually move ahead with with this debate on the basis of of Julian being a journalist and not a whistleblower, then I uh, I think it, it will possibly go a lot further. Now they were uh, the people at Radio Luck were absolutely astounded that such a discussion, and they were only supposed to be talking about uh, for the in the municipal council. We're only supposed to be talking about moving an office from one place to another, but then it ended up as a one hour debate, uh, giving Julian Assange, uh, the whistleblower, <laughs> uh, asylum. There were three journalists on the program discussing together and they, uh, they started talking about it and they thought it was a damn good idea to protect uh, whistleblowers. Otherwise, we all sink into totalitarianism. But certainly, because Julian Assange has been so misreported on and, and uh, WikiLeaks have actually issued a list of all of the misreporting, common mis misconceptions. But if I, if I might make it simple, there are three levels. Level one, the truth. Journalist, former editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks, publisher. That's the truth. Common misconception and usually quite innocent whistleblower and the whistleblowing site. So that's not true because uh, WikiLeaks is a publisher that receives the information from whistleblowers. Whistleblowers who are the people that you might work with that say that you're doing something terribly wrong, that try all the avenues to correct that. It doesn't work. Uh, Chelsea Manning did this, Edward Snowden did this, and finally their last resort is to go to the press. Now the problem is, uh, you know, even with the Pentagon Papers, there was great hesitation and uh, finally it got published, but most of the time it doesn't pass the gatekeepers and so that information doesn't get out. And as Andrew Fowler, one of our best Australian journalists, has pointed out, what governments like is the official leak that they can pass to their favorite journalist 
who will get the story out the way they want it with the spin they like right so there is a publishing publishing house there is a journalist there is an editor-in-chief who is now Kristen Ruffinson the wonderful Icelandic journalist who's taken the baton from Julian Assange so there is WikiLeaks that will if this information is previously unpublished if it is true and they go through rigorous processes to fact check and they have never been wrong they will and it's in the public interest they will publish and then finally the third level total smear hacker and that is still a great problem in the uh, Australian media uh, Christina Sanz uh, has already spoken about that in her last interview saying that uh, Australian uh, newspapers she she never stops contacting them about saying that Julian is a hacker when he did a little bit of hacking as a bright young kid when he was 17 but that was more like what we call penetration testing uh, and that was just to test the security of systems they would never uh, do any damage and they would just leave a message to say your uh, system is not secure and of course <laughs> we have just found out at defcom 29 which is the hacking conference uh, in las vegas that um, 30 children um, uh, under the uh, around the age of 11 were able to hack into the Florida voting a replica of the Florida voting machine in under 30 oh. minutes and one of them took less than 10 minutes so if a child can do it who's who's at fault here is it is it is it really the hacker hacker or or is it the government or any other corporation uh, that is not keeping their systems secure enough this point has been made by other vigilists that if governments want things to be secret, well, their first responsibility is to build secure systems. But is that a good idea? What WikiLeaks has released uh, is evidence of war crimes, of terrible corruption. So, you know, Article 16 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights includes the right to receive not just impart information freely, but to receive it. And I believe that all humanity has that right. And that's the thing that needs to be argued in Switzerland, that uh, uh, Julian Assange uh, is a person that has been giving us uh, that information that we have the right, we have all the right to know the truth so we can make informed decisions uh, when we vote.